It's a beautiful Saturday morning in the edition of ATP Live. We hope we have always educated you and we hope you learned something new today. Allergies and allergic. Okay, Dr. Bimisola, can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. All right, welcome to the show. Allergies Hi. and allergic conditions in children. I'm sure you have a lot for us, and we're looking forward to learning a lot today. You know, we can we can never <laughs> have enough of you. <laughs> Thank you for always teaching us. <laughs> All right, so we're ready yeah. to learn. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be with you again on Ask the Pediatricians Live. And today, this topic was actually one of the questions somebody asked us to address last week. And we will always try to make sure we educate our parents on what you want to know. And so here we are. So if you also want to discuss any particular topic, you can always drop it in comments and then we'll try and accommodate it as soon as we can. So good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday and it's wonderful to be with you on Ask the Pediatrician's Life. I am Bimi Salaboyde. I'm a pediatrician and founder of Ask the Pediatrician's Foundation. And this morning, like a question, we'll be talking about allergies. Uh, before we continue, can you kindly share the video? Share it on your timeline, share it in your groups, on your page. Just share it so that everyone can join us to learn this morning. And um, uh, if you have questions on allergies and allergic conditions, can you drop it in comments and we'll be able to take it. If you have questions on other issues not related to the topic of discussion, I will encourage you to kindly go to Ask the Pediatrician's Facebook group and post your questions there. One of our moderators yeah. or professionals will address that so that we soon feel like we're ignoring you, but we will always like to focus on the topic at hand. So if you have questions that is not related to the topic at hand, that is not a problem. Just go to our Facebook group and then uh, ask your questions there and it will be addressed. But on this thread, we would prefer if you ask your questions on allergies and allergic conditions in children. And um, um, if you, if, if there are questions related to adult issues, please don't drop it on our group. You can ask that on ATP Family. That is where we take adult issues. So we'll go on straight to the topic of discussion for today. So what are allergies, basically? Uh, so allergies tends to refer to the fact that um, sometimes our body reacts to certain things in, 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 a, in a different way. Um, if, when somebody's body is reacting or a child's body, since I'm talking about children now, is reacting to certain items yeah, yeah. in a way that an average person does not react to that particular uh, product or item, then we're talking that that person has what we call an allergy uh, to that particular uh, condition. So, um, so those those substances that the body is reacting to is what we call allergens allergies, whereas those, um, the reaction itself is what we call 
allergic reactions. And there are some people that have certain uh, tendencies to have reactions or allergies. So when they have it more recurrently, we call it allergic conditions. And you can, there are different types of them. So that is just by way of uh, introduction, yeah. All right, thank All right, you, Dr. Bini. Our right, please don't forget, don't forget to, share to share so that your friends can have an opportunity to ask their questions. Thank you. All right, Dr. Bini, what causes allergic conditions? What, what can we say are the root cause of allergies in children? Okay, so uh, so basically, like I said, allergy means your your body is sensitive or is reacting to certain things in a different way and for no absolutely no reason some people you know it's just your own well, I say like your makeup your body makeup your genetic makeup and that is why you will see that one of the things we'll talk about today is that allergies tend to run in family so you know oh. and yes allergies tend to run in family so if if your mom is allergic to something or has a particular something. allergy <laughs> You, you are also likely to, you may, or you or your own children may also have that sensitivity Same. Or, or that particular allergic condition. So it is just the way such people's body are made up, their genetic mm -hmm. makeup for them to react to certain things for, you know, absolutely uh, no reason. You know, normally our body is trained to deal with foreign things that we are exposed okay. to. But there's okay. a limit to which the body does that. But sometimes when the reaction is now like going overboard and all that, wow. we talk about allergic conditions. And allergic mm -hmm. conditions or allergic reactions can be mild, it can be moderate, it can be quite severe or life threatening. Mm -hmm. So, just wow. yes, uh, recently during this week, I was reading about a little school boy in the UK who died mm -hmm. because of a dairy wow. allergy. You know, one of the classmates. You know, it's somebody who is allergic to dairy, and one of them was chasing mm -hmm. the cheese, and they just put that cheese down his clothes or threw it at him. And you know, the guy mm -hmm. went into a very severe allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. That's why the paramedics giving adrenaline, giving all those things, the child eventually died. Right. I mean, this tells you how important allergies are, and it's important that we recognize when people are allergic to things. Or when children have allergic conditions and we do this, not everybody have those severe kind of things. Oh, and we call that anaphylaxis uh, kind of reaction. You know what? They're very severe, severe. life threatening kind of allergic reaction. Most people don't have those severe type. Most people have the uh, the mild type. Mild one. But, but it's just it's just to prove the point to us that allergies could be quite, quite severe. And there are so many things that it, people can react to. There are so many uh, allergies, as we call them. Let me just talk about the common allergies. We have things like pollens, especially from three. You see some people, they, some mothers would have noticed that when your children, when they pass through a, a grassy or a, a farm yes. land, that's, you know, having cheese. Like, oh, yeah. So that is, most of them could be allergic to pollens. Things like mold, uh, both indoors and outdoors too, also could be things that, you, these are common, it's really abroad. Uh, but even in Nigeria, things like dust, people react to dust mites, you know. So you see some people, when you're sweeping the floor, you know, that dust, you know, thing that come out, some, you, if they come into that room, they start sneezing. So, so some teachers, they will say the children should always sweep the classroom. I you notice that some children, when they are sweeping the class, especially in public school, then the children start to sneeze, they start to have itches, and know that they are most likely allergic to uh to dust and some people you know allergies you know animal people are allergic to animals you see some people they cannot come near cats or dogs or things mm -hmm. like that so <laughs> there are some people that are allergic to certain food and there are some people that are allergic to drugs you know insects and things like that so there are different things in fact there's virtually nothing that people cannot be allergic to okay, so yes, yeah so allergies can be uh, anything and allergies can come through various routes so people could if you you could just be from the hair you know just 
having the smell of that thing from the hair could cause an allergic uh, uh, you know you know that is really? inhale you know the way you can inhale the allergies it could be by touch you see some people they put on a hearing then they they start having reaction or they put on a particular cream you know they start having reaction that is allergy uh, allergic through contact you could also have allergies through uh what you eat you know so if you drink something or you eat something so you could you could have an so some people just just the fact that this uh, like for example some people that have very severe uh peanuts allergy for example the fact that maybe somebody has used a particular uh 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 has used a uh, pin uh granite oil or something in that particular place and they wash it and the person still use that place the person can have allergy it, some people are that sensitive to those kind of things so basically there are different things that children who are, are reactive and then there are different rules so it is not only what you eat it's not only what you touch even what you smell in the hair even you know even yeah. just you know just the fact that you come near the vicinity where that thing has been used you could uh people could come down with allergic uh, reactions yeah thank you Dr. Remy. that was quite insightful and somewhat scary i must say <laughs> okay um please don't forget to ask your questions dr bim is here live to take all of our questions um, we the, the question we have from, yeah yes okay thank you oladayo or debbie i want to know the signs to see that someone conclude okay she wants to know the signs to see to conclude that yeah. someone has got an allergic reaction yes thank you that's a very very important thing uh question uh, so there are many symptoms of allergy that you know people could have you know the common one most of us are used to is the fact that people have rashes you know they 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 they, they you know they start breaking out in in skin rashes and things like that uh, another thing is that people can start having you know red eyes or watering eyes and things like that so these are various ways by which um uh, allergy to manifest as uh, some people could have this tightening around their throat or itching around the throat no most time children cannot express some of these things uh but the common ones is they they may have watery eyes they may have sneezes they may have rashes they may have what we call eyes like something like um uh, uh, you know, like something is breaking up on the top of their skin. So these are some of the things that you, you know you could see that will show you that this person is having allergy. Sometimes they, you could start seeing their body swelling up, like they could have face swelling up. They could have you know all those kind of things. So these are um, uh, signs that you may be pointing. Sometimes people uh, they may have like if their throat is. I mean, shocking up as if you know they want to pass out and all that. Anything, yeah. And sometimes, if you have like the severe allergic conditions, the children could actually, you know, you could have collapse. That's the anaphylaxis where the person actually, um, I mean, in such cases, if you don't treat them, they would they may actually die from allergies. So, but the common ones is the uh, watering of the eyes, the uh, the skin rashes, the bills, the eyes, and things like that. Those are the Sleeping. common, yeah, those are the common symptoms of allergic um, reactions. But before we continue, I want to talk about allergic conditions. So there are also conditions that tends to um, that tends to cause. Um, uh that are associated with allergies so we have uh like the common one because you see mothers ask us a lot of the time uh my baby is having this and so we have allergic conditions can affect actually any organ of the body so you have allergic conditions like okay. If you start from the highest, we'll call this allergic conjunctivitis. So this, <laughs> this uh, individuals, when they're exposed to allergens, they start itching their eyes, the high stone red, and the, you see that their eyes is all, not always white. It has this brownish kind of change. So that is allergic conjunctivitis. Sometimes it's to affect the nostrils, so allergic rhinitis. So people that talk about the father, 
my children's i um they're always sneezing when they wake up in the morning they will sneeze and sneeze it's not just that you know everybody sneezes once in a while but continuously oh, yeah. sleeping and watching of the eyes and they have it every time maybe sometimes it could be seasonal maybe there are some particular period maybe with the wet season rainy season or winter in other places you know they could have that a fever too is one of those allergic conditions you could also have things like um if you move down from the nose down to the chest you have asthma asthma is also one of those allergic conditions so mm -hmm. so there are many form of allergic conditions so like allergic conditions. when they have because with breathing it's the wheeze and all that so some, some people also have food allergies so anytime they eat certain food mm -hmm. they start having vomiting okay. they start having bloating they start having cramps and all that so you have people that are allergic to dairy you have people that are allergic mm -hmm. to egg you have people that are allergic to fish you have people that are allergic to nuts and so there are, in fact there are virtually yeah, anything that people could be allergic to <laughs> so those are all people with food allergies and there are people that have what we call mm -hmm. allergies drug allergies as well so they take particular drug even if most people will take paracetamol and they'll be fine but some people will take that kind of medication and it will like say they have a reaction so exactly so you have so many many kind of allergies and the way you will notice that the first time you're exposed to that particular thing and also people have contacts allergies you know some people when they put on hearing their hair starts to itch and so it will start becoming red and it will start pain um and oozing water and things like that so some people have contact some people they cannot put on plaster on their skin when they put plaster on their skin they start you know the, it will be as mm. if uh, they have a wound or something even blisters. yeah even some people have latex rubber allergy when you put on gloves and all. so there are so many uh different kind of uh, mm. allergies but the, but the bottom line is that in all allergic conditions there must be something like what we call the allergens that the person is reacting to and unfortunately yeah. sometimes we don't even know what some people you know because the, the key solution yeah. to the key treatment the key answer the key uh, the simple answer to all these allergies is avoidance avoid stay, what away. Is to stay away from it but sometimes in some allergic conditions it's yeah. so hard to even know what are the triggers you know and and for those who have allergic condition despite all the efforts and uh dealing with all the triggers they could still have some of those things and you wonder what is it that is triggering it all this time around so yeah. Just that, yeah i think we should just go ahead and answer the question so we answered that first question okay. already all so, yes, yeah. We have. yeah yeah Okay, this is from Daisy, goody best. My baby skin is always bringing out water. What's the course? That question is not very clear. What is by your baby it's skin? Yeah, so, so let me just, Yeah, so I guess maybe she means that baby is having rashes and you'll be oozy. So let's start by saying that most babies also, when newborn babies, uh, they, they, they they are a little bit sensitive to to, to all these chemicals that we expose them to and so that is one of the reasons we always recommend that as much as possible you don't want to expose them to uh, i know most mothers like all those fine smelling um baby products Friends, but what makes those products fine smelling is the chemicals that they are having and sometimes people children could be sensitive to those chemicals so we always say we go for what we call hypoallergenic products though there are some children that also for, so thank you for even asking that question i forgot one of those allergic conditions is also <laughs> eczema which is the allergic condition that has to do with skin you know i talk about the eyes the nose the chest yes. skin too so you have some people that tend to have dry rough skin and they're always itchy and all that i guess that's what a baby most likely may have your baby may have what we call atopic dermatitis or allergic skin condition and so so for so such babies the management will require um uh for people who have allergic conditions in other words that you can have allergic reaction without having allergic condition so but some people have allergic condition that means they think this is like more continuous oh. exactly so for those who have allergic condition that is more continuous they need a more continuous treatment as well so 
most of the treatments usually we use what we call uh, steroids. Uh, you know, that's one of the main um, treatment allergy. So, so and you find that most allergy condition there's always one steroid. So if you're having allergy rhinitis, you may be using inhaled steroids. If you're having asthma, you'll be. I mean, you. I mean, for rhinitis, you use the aller uh, steroid sprays for. Um, for asthma. asthma, you may need to use your inhalers, and most mm -hmm. of them will have steroid. For the skin, too, sometimes the dermatologists use uh, some hydrocortisone steroids on the skin and all that. So, because that is to kind of suppress the, 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 the system, the immune system, the part of the body system that is react, that is reacts. allergic reaction, we usually tend to suppress them with steroid because it's like they are going overboard. From what is really normally expected. So I would say is that I will encourage you to see your doctor and let them, let them evaluate your baby further, just to be sure you know what it is that is causing your baby's um, uh, concern. Whether your baby actually has atopic dermatitis, which is what I'm suspecting, and if that is the case, then they will also tell you appropriate uh, intervention. Thank you. All right. Okay. This is another question from Tope Akiyosho. My daughter of four years is always having cough and catar anytime she takes cereal. Yeah. Okay. So sounds Doctor, it's we are suspecting, you know, that your baby may likely be allergic to cereal. Especially if you notice that that cough or or the runny nose always come after that cereal. That so, cereal. So the okay. what to do is to you know, leave it off for a while. If it's there for a while, then try it again and see whether mm -hmm. the thing happen again. So if it happens again, that is how you know that that person is alleg allergic to that condition. The same thing sometimes well, and that is why when you go to pro food products, you always it's always good to read the labels. So always so people because yeah. some people have allergies to all those things. So if you if you know your child is allergic to egg, for example, you, you they will they would have written it on the back of the of that um uh, products that yeah there's egg here or there's nuts here and all that so that you can avoid them and it's very very important and also one of the since we have kind of jumped gone and we have gone into management as well that some people that have allergic conditions they may need to have emergency um life-saving treatments with them so in, uh, uh, most of us they will give them what we call epipen epipen is adrenaline it's just like something that if this person is reacting, if it's having a severe, like they can just quickly give themselves mm -hmm. so that they don't go on to, you know, it's just like an injection, but it's reloaded. So all you need to do is to just stab the person's thigh on, and it releases that adrenaline and it will kind of halt the progression of the allergic reaction. Because sometimes, if not, the people with allergic conditions can progress very rapidly into. Um, mm -hmm. It's the very anaphylaxis that I talked about, and that is why it's important um, that you know what you are, the children are allergic to, and as much as possible, you avoid them. And sometimes you must be proactive to have your uh, allergic um, medication like EpiPen, you have it handy so that if you need to use it, you use it immediately. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank Papa you is asking my child is allergic okay. to, yeah, we, we, we're in yeah. prospect. So we can we can we are not we are not sure but we suspect so. we, we can't just make up our mind based on just what you said now. We need <laughs> to ask exactly. more questions. But if it, but like I say, if every it is only each time you give that particular cereal that that cereal. child have that thing, then the person may have it's not like yes. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. A very favor is asking, how can an eye allergy be treated? Okay, so like I said, the, the the treatment for most allergies. So if it's something that is ongoing, like it's, it's a chronic uh, conjunctiva. So usually, people that have let me just uh, differentiate and say people that have allergic conditions sometimes you are fine. You know, it's not as if you are having the. So it depends on how severe your kind of allergic condition is. So sometimes you are fine mm -hmm. in between. So but so if you are that type that is fine in between, it is only when you have like the reaction. Then we'll treat that particular episode and that will be hard. But sometimes some people have it like a chronic thing. Like just a, let's give an example of asthma. So there are people that have asthmatic attack maybe once in a year or once in a blue moon. 
maybe when they are supposed to be particular thing but otherwise in between they are fine but there are people that right. almost every day they have symptoms so people that have attack once in a while that is intermittent we usually will not will not be on any continuous treatment but when they, but they must be ready that when any attack mm -hmm. happens then they very, very treatment true. and that's so that is that you know so if people like that may have their inhaler just the ventolin inhaler but they will be using the steroid inhaler like every day but people that have a chronic kind of condition those ones they, they like asthma that they have symptoms almost every day every week those ones need to use a kind of preventive treatment long-term treatment that they must take every day so usually which is steroids the same thing for the eyes so for the eyes if it is just once in a while you have that eye redness and all that maybe when you're supposed to something then just using some topical eye drops the client will be fine but if you are the type that means you are having it your eyes always okay. having mm -hmm. it yeah so the ophthalmologist usually they are the one that will treat that they may need to give you the steroid and say uh eye drops for for a while you know so what i would encourage favor is that you should see your um uh ophthalmologists and then they will give you their proper treatment and then they will monitor because sometimes people have allergic condition as a child and after a while they stop having it they they, yeah we, we people always say outgrow we know we try not to use it. <laughs> okay okay for the purposes i'm talking in the parents program because said you know they are okay. so they don't need treatment anymore so so okay. it's, it's possible so that's why it's important that the the specialists or the professionals uh, treat your child, yeah. Okay. A parent favor is asking again, can eye allergy lead to serious eye problems? Mm, not really. Apart from the fact that it's to make your eyes brown, and then you tend to, because when you have the itching from the allergy, then you introduce, uh, in the presence of when so the children are itching the eyes with dirty hands, you are introducing other things, bacteria, so you tend to have uh, other uh infection as a secondary and that is actually common to almost all allergies even the skin one people that have allergies true. in the process of eating and all that then they have wounds and then it can become secondarily infected with okay. infections and all that so that tends to happen a lot with allergy but on its own the allergy on its own should not give you any eye problem per se apart from the fact that people always wonder why is your eyes always looking not looking bright. Uh, brown. <laughs> 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 smoking something. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Talk where I can actually say thank you, Dr. Bimi. We appreciate you. Please share this video so that your friends can have an opportunity to ask their questions. Dr. Bimi is still live and we're still talking about allergies and allergic conditions. All um, right. Eber is saying, yes, doctor, it is a chronic one. Then I think you should go to the hospital, right, Dr. Bimi? Yes, yes, and should see the ophthalmologist so that they can handle it. Just to say that for those who are watching on the live part, on the watch party, uh, if you have questions, you will have to move down to our video itself and drop your question there. And But our ACP moderators, if you are watching, kindly help us. Uh, pull the questions from the... Um, from the... Yeah watch pass it down to uh, the page so that we can feature it and answer it. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Baby, quick one. Um, I, I had a child, a three-year-old, who was always itchy. She practically had skills, and I was scared. So mm. when she went to the hospital, they said she's heat intolerant. Can we say that's an allergic reaction? Uh, it's what do they mean by it in Thailand? Because sometimes I always want to be very sure what the doctors are saying. And sometimes they said because her skin is very dry, so she cannot yeah. tolerate heat at all. So it makes her really itchy. Yeah, but I think that the underlying condition is still the allergic. The, the why is she having a dry skin in the first place? So that looks more. We tend to have that in people with allergies as well. Their skin is always dry. Though there are many skin conditions anyway, and some people have that. But one of the commonest reason why children have dry skin, scaly mm -hmm. skin. Because it's a sign of what we call chronic um, inflammation of the skin, which you tend to also get in people with allergic uh, skin conditions, allergic uh, dermatitis or atopic dermatitis, as we call it. So it, it could be. So it, so and of course they always need to have 
moisture so their body the skin in such people cannot retain moisture and so and it, it's difficult for you to process cooling and all that that's why they need to cool off most of the time so when you like for example one of the things what we say is that when you have such children when you are taking the bath you don't dry them off completely you will just damp mm -hmm. the skin you don't yes. you don't use it too well and dry them off. you see some of them when you you just damp it, the dermatologist will say you just damp so that there's a little bit of water still on the skin and on then the skin. Thank you, you need to go and apply. So most of us will apply our cream once a day and you are fine for the rest of the day. For them, they may need to intermittently go and apply mm -hmm. the uh, non-allergic uh, cream, moisturizing mm -hmm. cream. And at the same time, they need to take their nails short so that they don't tend to scratch. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they tend to scratch. And like remember what we say, if they scratch, they introduce Little little wounds which become yes. events for infections to come in and, and all that. So but while we're still on that, can I quickly say that allergic condition tends to also occur in clusters? So apart from the fact that it tends to run in family, so if you are allergic to something, it is likely your child will be allergic to it. And so that's why sometimes we ask okay. questions. We ask you and even for doctors, even about drugs, we always ask you, have you reacted to any particular drug? If your child has ever reacted to any particular drug, you must always send the doctor. So some children are allergic to Ampiclos, for example, the penicillin drugs, and you must always let the doctor know so that the doctor don't prescribe another penicillin drug. No, no, no. Allergic to the sulfur-containing drugs, like fancy that, for example. So if you have taken a sulfur-containing drug like fancy that and you reacted, then you it's important to tell your doctor so that they don't prescribe it again and they don't even prescribe other family of sulfur containing drugs like sexrin, yeah, so, something like that. So, so you it's very, very important. In fact, in some places, mm -hmm. if you have a very serious allergy, you carry a badge in your hand to tell people that you are allergic to this. Is like <laughs> carry it in your hand so that it's a we call it medical mm -hmm. bracelets or medical alerts bracelets so that people will know. When they are giving, in case you pass out for any reason and you can't talk, then people know that oh, this person should never be given this kind of drug. Now, what I want to say is that for children, allergies tend to occur in clusters. So, a child, the same child may have allergic skin condition, the same child may have allergic rhinitis, the same child may have mm. asthma. So, we call it atop, wow. atop match. Or initially, it could start with the eyes, then went to the nose, and then go to the asthma part, go, affect the skin. So, you tend to see that. People with allergic conditions tend to have so many of them together. And most mm -hmm. of the time, there's always a family history. There's always a family of somebody who has asked either one of those allergic conditions or has multiple. So if I and I feel like the mother or the history from the mother's side is more uh, likely, mothers likely pass it on to the children. Okay. <laughs> so if you are a mother, you're prone to allergies. Uh, you have had allergic mm -hmm. conditions, then it's likely you will your 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 children like have allergies. So you need to be extra 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 careful. All okay. right. Okay. So let's move on to our questions. Okay. Doctor, okay. I can show you here again. I have noticed that cough and cancer developing after taking cereal for close to two years now. Is there a need for her to be on medication? Okay. So talk by the. The simplest solution to allergies, uh, allergic Stay conditions, is to avoid whatever it is your child. So, if you, I mean, why, keep, why do you keep giving the same cereal for two years? This is cereal. Just take care of the cereal. I don't want to believe that it's all the cereals the child is allergic to, although there are some yes. kind of cereal, like some people have what we call um, gluten allergy. So, and gluten could be in so in different cereals like wheat and things like that. So you may want to avoid that. So the, the, the solution actually is to know what specifically the child is allergic to. And there are people that we call allergists. Allergists are doctors with specialty yeah. in allergies and other <laughs> allergies. Yeah, yeah, allergies. So I've used so many terminologies today, allergies, allergies. A lot. <laughs> but, but basically, if if you're the, sometimes if you're not sure what, the, what it is, you know, because sometimes you're using something, it is not the whole food the child is allergic to, say, particular component of it. So they have a way of running allergy battery tests, but they usually do it only for very severe cases and when the child is having recurrent 
you know, allergic reactions and very severe ones or life threatening, and they couldn't figure it out. So they can run those allergy battery tests. And of course, unfortunately, it's very from one country to another. So the one they use in US will not work for you in Nigeria and things like that. Okay. So, uh, so sometimes doing those allergy tests, they could know what it is specifically your child is allergic to, you know, so that they can oh. stay off. You know, stay off. So, because that's the simplest solution. The simplest solution is to stay off. So, if your child is reacting to a particular syringe, I mean, that's the simplest thing to do. Stay off it. Take other things. If your child is allergic to egg, don't give them egg. They are allergic to fish. Don't give them fish. And that's why when you go to the stores, you will see that they say don't take nuts in the stores. Don't test them because you don't know if you are allergic, Who is allergic to it or someone yeah. around. That is one of the reasons we tell mothers when you're introducing new food. Sorry, we are digressing to nutrition, but it's very important mm -hmm. because that is where most mothers pick up allergies. They find it easier to mm -hmm. pick up allergies from cream, soap, and things like that. But allergies from food, if that's why one of the reasons we say when you're introducing new food, do it one at a time. Because you want to know what it is. If your child is reacting, you know. So if you do one cereal at a time and you don't do like uh, uh i don't want to mention it but you know those, those kind of series that you have added like 10 series together and blend this for you you will never mm -hmm. know which one your child react to they will have added series they will have added the, the granules they will have added everything so how do you know which one so take one food at a time at a time and for if for any reason you give your child if particular food and you think the child reacted to you, you are not sure whether it's a coincidence or something you do it the second time it happens again okay. that's 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 enough for you to know that most likely the yes, child is allergic yes. to this food. If you really want to prove it, then you can go see the allergies to test. Them. There's a way they do what we call patch tests and things like that. But the simplest solution is just stay stay off, stay and, then, away. <laughs> and then your child will be fine. Okay, all right. So I don't think your yeah. child needs medication. Your child should stay off the food first. If after staying off the food, the child is having those uh, uh, cancer and all that, it may just be allergic rhinitis on his own. Not necessarily tied to a particular food, and in that case, then you really need to see uh, a doctor, and that's when we may need to give the uh, medical medication. Okay. Okay, this is a message from Omotola Temida Yoladipo. My baby vomits anytime she takes anything produced with cow milk. Does it mean yeah. she's allergic to cow milk? Yeah. It's you have answered the question, I think. Possibly, possibly, <laughs> possibly allergy to cow's milk. So stay off cow's milk. There's, there's actually what we call cow milk allergy. allergy and yeah. Especially, you know, and remember the babies when they are born. That's one of the reasons we say you should, you should take breast milk. I know I always I always talk about breastfeeding every time. <laughs> because one of the things breastfeeding does is that breast milk actually protects your baby. You know, uh, because your baby is being exposed to your own. Uh, sub, I mean, your own um, uh, uh, production. <laughs> yeah, things in your own body, they are not likely to react to that compared to yeah, something yeah. from another complete agent like a cow. You know, if you take me from a cow. So, whereas if it's a meat from a woman, the, the mother is likely going to be well tolerated. And then there are other anti allergy kind of protective factors in breast milk. And so that's one of the reasons it is not even good to introduce babies early to all those formula and all those cow milk because the babies tend to develop allergies uh, earlier. Whereas if they take breast milk, they are more protected, you know. So uh, almost like it's possible your baby is allergic to cow milk. There's actually what we call cow milk allergy and you should stay off. That's what it means. Okay, maybe it's back again. Okay, please, doc. Which doctor can handle an eye allergy? <laughs> the doctor that handle eyes, that's the ophthalmologist. They are the one. Okay. okay. All right. Sonia is saying good morning, Dr. Bimi. Sonia, if you have your questions, please ask your questions and don't forget to share. Daisy, a diary. My little niece develop, develops rash after taking Nutribon, but it's one of her best. Best what? Best food? <laughs> you see, I think I, I'm not so sure, but if I remember, I think it's one of those cereal I was talking about that have so many components in it already. Okay. If if it's this, you can correct me whether I'm wrong. If the triple is one of those that is a mismatch of so many things. Oh, so rice, wheat, corn. Exactly. That's the problem with those kind of food products. They you don't know. What your child is reacting to in that particular, it may just be the nuts. 
It may just be the granite part. It may just be the the part. So what they mean? That is why it's better not to start your children on those kind of. You know, start with one. Do your if you are doing maze and pap, do it alone first. Then do yes. if you want to add. Then the following day, you at least after two three days, you know that you are done with that one has been. Yeah, fine. So you can now add something else so that if there is a reaction, you know it's a new addition. Not that you can't one add. You just add it. But when you are introducing them. Take them one. Introduce each of the components Same. one after the other, so that you know which one the child is reacting to. Uh, please, when you're asking questions, make it short and brief. Because if you ask your question is too long, you won't see our screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> life math. Wow. <laughs> life okay. math. My son is allergic to cow milk. Okay. If he takes anything containing milk, he starts reacting. Starts with a cough, watery eyes, sneezing, cutter, and then itching all over, and then he can't breathe. Uh -huh. we will have we will have to give him his ventolin syrup and peritin. What yeah. can we give him to supplement to cow milk? I worry because milk is missing in his diet. Okay. okay. Uh, there are other kind of milk, uh, life mass. So, uh, so cow milk is not the only kind of milk. So yeah. soy milk, we have what we call non-dairy milk. Non yeah, okay. Most of the studies, we always say, they will say this is a non-dairy milk. In other words, this yeah. is a milk that is not from cow. That this is a milk that is from plant products like soy milk and things like that. that those may be alternative. Your child is actually having what look like a more severe kind of an allergy. You know, you, your yeah. child is starting not to breathe. That's not what you said. That is almost going up yes. that reaction. So please, please don't give, don't even use it. In, and people should remember that the fact that if you are allergic to me, for example, it's not only me you should not take. You should not take anything that they use milk in the production as well. So yeah, no, cakes, no, no pancakes and things like that. <laughs> because sometimes people don't remember. And whenever you go to the store and mm. you even buying biscuits and things like that, always read them because they will tell you in the label. You should say it is compulsory for all uh, manufacturers of food products to so always list label and so always tell you. Whether they even use some sense. of those products in the same factory, it's, you know, for example, it may not like for example, granola, for example, it may not be part of that particular food item. But if they also use granola or peanuts in that same factory for other things, they must oh, declare yes. that because some people are so yeah. allergic to things that just ordinary smell. Some people, people can just come into your house. People that have this uh, peanuts allergy. Just the fact that you you have cooked with peanut, they've not tasted it, they've not touched it, they can start reacting. Yes. So that is why it's important. And so life matters, I worry about your baby. So I think you should, if it's abroad, you actually have what we call EpiPen, you should have it handy. But go for non-dairy milk. There are many alternatives. So just go for that. Okay, talk I can't show again. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. She doesn't take cereal again. She reacts to all the cereal I know. I don't want to you know? <laughs> so good that there are other alternative sources of carbohydrates. Anyway, cereal is just yeah. carbohydrates. So there are tubers, there's yam, there's potato, those are not cereals, there's rice. So you have so many other options to give your child carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So cereal is fine. Most likely, I'm suspecting that most likely your baby may have more of the gluten allergy because gluten is mm -hmm. one of the things that you tend to see in many cereals. So it's not all just cereals. Even if he's reacting to almost all the cereals, you know, so it's not just about the cereal itself. It's about a particular component. Of and I'm strongly suspecting gluten, but you know, it's not so common in many, but I, I don't know. Unless there are other things. Sometimes you think it's all the cereal, then just the something. It may not even be the cereal. Maybe it's something you're having when you're preparing your cereal. People react cereal. to water. People mm, react sure. to People could be allergic to warm water. People could be allergic to cold water. People could be allergic <laughs> to it. I'm telling you, even temperature wow. changes. It could be the milk you are adding to it that the children is reacting. Because most mothers will give cereal with the milk. So the only way you will know it's not the yeah. milk is when you give the cereal without the milk. So yeah. you really need to really eat. That's why sometimes it's hard. It takes the allergies to figure out which one it is. And sometimes even the allergies have no clue. We just don't know what the child is reacting to. Yeah, almost a lot. Thank you as well. Mm -hmm. okay. This is from Sonia. My baby has a fragile skin. Whenever I take notes, I notice she's from Russia. White substance on it. Could it be she's allergic to nuts? She's on exclusive breastfeeding. Yeah, no, thank you, Sonia. And Sonia has even brought a particular important thing which we have not mentioned. In fact, that for mothers, if you your baby is allergic to something and you take it, 
because it's going to pass through the breast milk to your baby. Your baby could actually react to it. So it's important that if you notice that you stop taking that particular food, you know what? Notice that she's not she's not giving it to the baby directly, but she's the one taking it. But because you are still breastfeeding, your baby could react to what. And that's why when you're breastfeeding, mothers always ask me, ah, "What food should I eat? What food should I not eat?" You can eat any food as long as each time you eat it, you notice that your baby does it, it's not becoming fussy or having reactions and things like that. So, Sonia, I'm looking like you say your baby has a fragile skin, which I am taking as your mom speak for having allergic skin or a topic dermatitis one. And so, such a baby, um, uh, most likely may be allergic to nuts as well. And since you've noticed that you start having rashes, whether I don't know whether the rashes is coincidence or not because your baby already has a fragile skin anyway but if you yeah. and mothers are very intuitive and observant but if you notice that it's only the days you take that um, um not yeah. when you breastfeed the baby starts having rashes then most likely your baby is allergic to um a not yeah. and you should stop eating it as well that's it and you may it's notice that when you stop the, skin, the rashes may disappear Okay, Daisy saying thank you, Dr. Bimi. Thank you, Daisy. All right, let's keep the questions coming. We're still here. Dr. Bimi is still here. Like, all right, Ola Dayo or Debbie, she's back again. Please, Doctor, is there anything like sponge allergy? Yeah. Because anytime I use sponge for just two days, the next day rashes will be out. Yeah, some people's skin, yeah, some people, so most likely you have the allergic skin kind of condition. So such people, they, they you can't use ash something on the skin. You can't scrub the skin. That you just use soft clothes. You know they they have to. Be, I think you should just say dermatologist. You have to be very <laughs> soft skin. You sometimes they just use uh, like soft uh, face towel just to, to wipe their skin. You can't use sponge, and you may, and the way Nigerian use sponge actually, some of our sponge <laughs> are too harsh. Even for those who don't have allergies. Even those who don't have allergies, oh, and when some of them will be scrubbing it, is you think you are scrubbing the back of a pot of jello fries? <laughs> well, you it's can't blame them. Well, you know, our weather is very hot, and then they sweat, so and then they doors. You don't need to do that. So just um, you know, so don't don't do. So, but just go up the sponge. It's okay. Go up the sponge. Use use foam. Use towel, uh, face towel, and see whether it makes a difference. And 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 then, oh, it's good. It may not even be the sponging per se it's maybe the the, the substance of the sponge is it a rubber sponge is it a, is it the there are different kind of material mm -hmm. used to make the sponge so it may be that particular material used to make that was used in making that particular sponge that you are reacting to so if there are many perspectives to look at it. yeah <laughs> yeah okay sonia is already talking about granite yeah we know we've answered already so stay up granite okay. sonia yeah that's true yeah Oh, uh, life months like love. <laughs> life months, please keep your questions short, okay? okay. My granddad used to be asthmatic. No, that's, so yeah, that'd be the reason for his allergy, turning towards asthma. It's really bad. And when he reacts, because he won't be able to breathe. Is he asthmatic? Will he outgrow it? Is he so, he's so skinny because he can't take ice cream, chocolates, cake, pizza? He can't stay in Domino Pizza because yeah. of cheese. Yes, I already suspected that your baby is going is having the severe allergic condition. Yes, severe, like yeah. And of course, we've already mentioned that that once there's a family history of allergies, you know, it's, it's likely, likely your grandfather has allergic condition asthma. So your baby is also obviously has inherited the allergic conditions. And you may not have had it so bad, but I suspect somebody else in the family also have had it, but you, your, your baby is having it now. And your baby is having the severe kind, but I disagree with you that your baby is so skinny because it can't take chocolate. <laughs> All of those. That, I, excuse me, your baby don't need <laughs> any of those things to, to grow <laughs> to, to hard weight. So please, your baby, those are not what your baby needs. There are CLD options. There are fruits. Your baby can take protein. Your baby can take egg. It's only milk now that is it's allergic to. I'm very told you there are other uh, non-dairy milk. If you even go to the, there are even milk for babies that are like non-dairy as well, because I didn't know how old your baby is. And now, so please, 
that is not an excuse. Your people should not even be eating all those <laughs> junks that you just mentioned. I understand. Yes, we can give them as a treat once in a week or so. Just a treat, three day parties. But that is not what should be a their everyday diet. So pizza like or food. cake or, or chocolate. That that's not their. Okay. I mean, no, no, no. That cannot be his main diet. What happens to rice? What happens to beans? What happens to uh, potato? What happens to, butter? what happens to egg? Those, those are things your baby should take. And I don't know how old your baby is. You can still keep breastfeeding until baby is two years. And you can use non-dairy milk as well, like we've mentioned. So see your pediatrician about or your dietitian, they work out the weights and the food, the calories your baby should take, how to go right. about that's that's number one. Number your second part of your question is about will it outgrade? It's very difficult to answer that question now, but I your baby sense seem to have the the um Severe. The severe kind of allergic kind of conditions, and like what I was telling you quite earlier, that it tends to be a match. There's what we call ATOP match. So your baby is, is having the food re allergy. It's yeah. also may likely have asthma, may likely have skin and all. Yeah. I can't remember the other ones you mentioned before. So it's, it's not uh, unusual for babies to have uh, multiple kind of allergic conditions that together we call it ATOP match. It's like they mash together from the skin to the nose to the eyes to the uh, um, to, to the chest, asthma, and all that. So basically, uh, life match. You need you more than any other person need a pediatrician with <laughs> allergy, uh, so specialty. Most likely, an allergy. Yeah, preferably you will get some of them in the teaching hospital. So if you go to those kind of hospital, your baby needs to be followed up routinely. And your baby is one of those babies that will really need one of what I was talking about called EpiPen. Something that, because you say your baby can't even stay in a Domino's uh, store. You know, that's true. Yeah. So you don't, so you really need to be ready. So, you know, in case your baby needs something like that. So you, you can yeah. quickly, uh, if your baby reacts suddenly, you know what to do. So those are the kind of things that uh, you need to do. Yeah. Life Matter, I hope you've heard that. Please go and see your pediatrician immediately. All right, more questions. Okay, Sophia, thank you very much. Thank you, Sophia. We appreciate you. All right. Top is saying thank you. God bless you and your family. Amen. And you too. Oh, okay. Life Matter is saying seven years old. Wow, you really oh, need seven. Yeah. Yeah, and you must have a pen ready because people may not know. And it's no. important that you let the teachers at school know. It's important you let people know because it's a child. People are going to give him cake. People are going to give him things. You must tell him. There's one of my uh, pediatrician's friend son who is allergic to egg, who is allergic to fish and all that. So each time he comes to my house, it's, a mom has uh, his mom has already told him, he must always tell you that I don't take this. And that is, you it's know, when you have a child and you're trying to do birthday parties and you're trying to give them a treat, and the child, because children will be tempted, they see other children eating all this nice take stuff. So you will be tempted. So it's important that you let him know, and he must always tell people, I can't eat egg, I can't eat, um, you know, mm -hmm. his, his own is milk, right? But the other one child that was talking about is about egg, and, uh, you know, virtually all this nice thing you do, there's egg in them, so he can't and eat milk. It. Yeah, so but your own is milk. So milk is also like a, something we use often in almost all our cookings and so it's important that you let teachers know and people people will give him things thinking they are helping him it could react badly so and he must have epi pen unfortunately it's very expensive and because it could also expire but i just think your baby really needs to be followed by an allergist if you're in lagos you can try last so you have a good allergist there uh, that will be following up your child it's important yeah all right thank you hola dio debbie yes doctor the dermatologist said I should not use sponge for her. But well, thanks for the idea of the towel and the foam. I will try that. That's good. We're happy that we're able to help you. <laughs> okay, this is from Folusha Shotomi. Mm, I think copy for one of our from the wash party. Oh, okay. Good morning, doctor. My son since birth is having light yellowish eye discharge. He has been taken to the hospital and was given some antibiotics and eye drop, it has not stopped. What should I do? He's four weeks old. Your baby doesn't have allergic condition. Look like your baby has what we call a ophthalmic neonatorum, but basically it's just uh, eye infection. Basically, that's it. 
it's common in newborn babies. So if if the antibiotic your doctor has given you didn't work, you need to go back. They will give you something else. They will take a culture. They will take part of that discharge, send it to the lab because sometimes we need to the one we are giving is not effective and we just need to give something else. So when we do the lab test, the test will tell us which particular bacteria is causing the infection and what antibiotics the, the bacteria will respond to mm -hmm. and then we'll give your baby that. So sometimes we use the, most people use Gentisia and Cranvenic because these are the common ones everybody can use. But some babies, their own reaction may not go with, I mean, their own eye infection may not go with, um, um, uh, so they need to give something a little bit stronger. Sometimes we have to give some maybe injections, not even just eye drops alone. Injection antibiotics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that we do that. So um, uh, that's Grace. Grace, please see your pediatrician. It's very important. It's very very important. Yeah. Okay. Grace. All right. This is from Folusho again. Okay. My five-year-old boy has been diagnosed with traces of asthma and bronchi pneumonia. He has been on antibiotics, inhaler, cough syrup, and prednison for Prednison. close to two years. Prednison. Please, I want to know if there is any permanent cure for asthma in children. Permanent cure for asthma, Dr. Bimi. Okay, number one, uh, in Kiro, Wachiko, your baby doesn't have traces of asthma. Your baby has bronchial asthma. It's always important that we get things correct. If you don't yeah. get the diagnosis correct, we are going to keep on missing it up. So your baby has bronchial asthma. Let's accept that. There's not, people don't have trace of asthma. They either have <laughs> asthma or they don't have asthma. Number two, then the asthma your baby has, you know, like I was telling you quite before, it could be intermittent, once in a while kind of asthma, yeah. or it could be the chronic, or what we call persistent or asthma and even the persistent asthma can be mild moderate or severe if your baby was already put on steroids I, I i'm not so sure how your baby was managed now if a baby has asthmatic attack during the acute episode we can give antibiotics we'll give pregnancy alone we will use some inhaler and the baby will be fine if the baby doesn't have another attack again so soon then your baby will not be on continuous medication but if your baby is having recurrent attacks of bronchial asthma then your baby needs to uh be on inhaler steroid inhaler what, what we call preventive medication for asthma and it's not prednisolone it's an inhaler but it's an inhaler that or a, something you slave in for the baby that is steroids that contains steroid and what we call long acting beta agonist so those are the kind that is a the 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 kind of medication that your baby will have to be on so I'm not sure who is seeing your baby. Uh, I would recommend that you, you must also be seen by a pediatrician for follow-up regularly because they need to, asthma is a chronic condition, it needs to be followed up. So a pediatrician must see your baby and monitor the asthma control. If you go to our pediatrician Facebook group, if you go to our file yeah. section, we, we will see what you should be doing as a parent when it comes to asthma and uh, what your doctor should be doing and all that. It's very, very important because parents actually manage asthma and it's important you get to try. And asthma too can kill people if they are not properly managed. And because if the child have a life-threatening attack and you don't know what to do, it can be life... It, it, I mean, it, we don't want something like that to happen. So that is not... So your baby must be seeing a pediatrician regularly for follow-up. That is true. And whether the child will grow asthma or not is something that depends on uh many factors so like i said most children will stop having asthma attacks uh but some keep on having it even so that's why we have adult asthma. so yeah all right that's true our true. time is uh, <laughs> gone Fast wow yeah. i was even looking at the okay. time the time is flying because we have so many questions <laughs> okay so we need to rush now because we have some announcements to make okay life months uh epipen if you see the allergies like i said you need to see an allergist it is not very easily available in Nigeria. It's very expensive, but you can you you can always get it if you really want it. The, the problem with every pen is that you may you you it's, it's so expensive, but you may never use it and, and it will expire. Then it you have to buy yeah. So you will always find that very painful. But what is if it is needed, it could, be, it could be a difference between life and death. I'm telling you, yes. like that boy from UK that was they even they even gave the child EpiPen and all that, but the child died. I mean that that's how severe some people's allergic condition are. So we'll just rush through the remaining questions so that we can round up. Um, okay. 
please, my daughter has been having consistent cut and headache for cause of always blowing her nose. She's always blowing her nose. This has been going on for months now. Also, can you suggest an allergist for us? Yeah, your baby look like your baby has allergic rhinitis. Your baby doesn't even need an allergist. Any ENT surgeon or pediatrician can see handle that. So uh, you can, you didn't tell me where you are. So it's difficult for me if you are in uh, Abuja. I can't tell you somebody who is in Lagos. So it's, when you ask that kind of suggestion, it's better you put your, your location. But what general advice is the teaching hospitals always have the specialist. The teaching hospital, in your, the closest teaching hospital to you will be the best place to get those uh, specialists for your baby yeah okay um yes 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 my two-year-old coughs only at night if yeah. you apparently gets cold and coughs too what could that be what could it looks like maybe you also have allergy in fact there, there's some kind of asthma that that's actually the way they present they only cough at night only at, so, night. only at night only at night yes only night coughs so you or your baby could also have some um, something in the throat because you say your baby is also having cough and cold uh, that uh, we call it postnasal dripping. You know? So when the child is sleeping, some there's a lot of fluid trickling down the throat and that is what is causing the cough. So basically, you tell them to see a pediatrician first and then they will be able to figure out which one it is and then you will be able to advise you based on after they've examined your baby because we look into the throat, we'll, we'll check whether there are other noise or tonsillitis, things like that. We also listen to the child whether there are weak systems such just bronchial asthma. So people don't understand when I say something, you need to see a doctor because if young boy you've told me, when I examine your baby, there are other things that we found that will help me to know yeah. which of the possible what exactly. So it is not always fair to ask the doctor what after one or two line of symptoms, what do you think is the cause? I may have like one thousand one thing in my mind that could be the cause, but when I examine your baby, I may narrow it down to maybe another five or ten. Then maybe I may want to do some basic tests and it will help me. Sometimes even after doing that, we're still not hundred percent sure of which one sure. is the cause. Sometimes we have to just do what we call Try, yeah, try treatment and <laughs> see that the parents one or not. Yeah, well, this be honest. That's how doctors work. So, but, but you know, mothers uh, are not patients. We want yeah, to know what is wrong right that's now. That's why sometimes people get annoyed when they come here and they tell them, you go and see the doctor. Thank people you. attack us in the past, but you're already a doctor and I'm already talking to you. So tell I, us, I, yes. I to go and see another doctor. Okay. But I can't touch your baby via Facebook. I can't touch your baby. I can't examine you. And there are some more questions I need to even ask you that. To ask. I need to do that. I, I mean, I won't be able to do that online. So this is about ex education, really. And when you now have questions that require that your baby should be seen physically, that is why we tell you to see a doctor. I hope that has helped somebody. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We didn't take that one, Dr. Bimi. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the previous uh, one. Which previous one? Did I? Oh, I didn't answer have... No. Okay. Yes. Yes. Adibe. I've been giving my 10 weeks baby peritin and septrin for cough and cata. He's still coughing. The doctor said his chest is clear. And please, uh, okay. Who is giving the peritin and the septrin? I hope it's not you. Because the way you said I have been giving my 10 weeks, uh, please don't <laughs> give your 10 weeks spiritin and septrin like that. Please see a pediatrician. The baby is too young for you to be doing all that. We, we usually would not treat the 10 weeks old with spiritin and septrin if the chest is clear, especially. And you didn't say the child mm. has fever. So mo that mm. treatment is wrong. So a 10 weeks old baby should be on exclusive breastfeeding. If you're exclusive breastfeeding, keeping the baby warm. The baby should not be having cough and cata and keep the baby away from people that have cough and cata because that is where they get them from. And all you need to do is keep your baby warm, breastfeed exclusively, it protects your baby from what we call acute respiratory infection. So please stop the separate, stop the peritin, see a pediatrician. Please see a pediatrician and do what I've said, and your baby should be fine. If your baby is not fine, please be because sometimes persistent cough in such a baby. Could be a sign of other problems Some of something else a child with a cardiac problem for example though this cata there that one suggests to me that it's most likely a viral infection usually pick up from the siblings or other people who come visiting touching the baby but if you breastfeed and you keep the baby warm and avoid exposing the baby to such uh, small cooking in the house people touching the baby your baby should be fine but please stop the routine and antibiotics please 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 stop okay thank you <coughs> All right. Okay. Good morning, Doc. My baby is 12 months and two weeks. Whenever I give her some movie time, radio, I notice when she pulls the next day, the pool contains almost 90% like of the radio. Like she just yeah. pulled it as she ate it. Yeah. Should I stop giving her the radio? No. Please advise. 
No, it's, that's normal. There's nothing wrong. That's vegetables. So there are parts of plants or vegetables that the babies could not digest. So some uh, really in toddlers. So somehow they don't digest, but it's good. It's fine because it helps to. It, it, they are good for. The, we need the fiber part of it to keep the bowel moving. So it is not okay. everything that has to be absorbed into the body. Sometimes some things is also to help with the bowel. So vegetables are good. So the way do is good. Just keep giving it. It doesn't matter. Some babies have it. With time, it will also stop as well. So, but don't worry about that at all. So don't worry about the green you will see in the in your in the store. It's fine. <laughs> absolutely fine but the body is taking what the body needs don't worry about it it's the part that the body could not digest and absorb that's the part that is being passed out in the stuff all right all right agu my son has bronchi has asthma and i have tried to find out the trigger but still comes consistently even with the control medications given by the pediatrician i also want to know the side effects of these allergic drugs or control drugs the metal present so and Dr. Baby, please help me out here. <laughs> yeah, so don't no worry. Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, your baby, sometimes I've already mentioned that before that sometimes we don't know why some some keep having the uh, you may not know all the triggers. Okay. The, the, the trigger could be as simple as the change in the weather, which you have no control over. You know, it could be as, yeah, it could be as simple as the fact that the weather is colder than the I mean so that that's the issue that's why so don't worry yourself about if you can't figure the trigger what i'm more concerned about is the control for the the asthma unfortunately sometimes control could be hard it's really uh those who are what we call the severe persistent asthma they tend to have poorer uh, more difficult to control asthma but i i think you should still see your pediatrician i hope you're seeing them but look like you are you are seeing them because i can see also some drugs that you're giving drugs. We will not want to go into all the drugs and medication, but just to suffice to say that your baby, all those drugs, your doctor should be talking to you about them anyway. When they put your child on drugs, they should tell you what are the side effects and things like that. So you should discuss all that with your pediatrician because uh, they should tell you all that. But the drugs have is supposed to help your baby. So we will not put your child on any medication that's... The good must outweigh the bad for us to put the, the child. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sonia, my son of six years has been has had some rashes coming out of his armpits. It's not like the normal heat rash. Could that be his reaction to something? And his sister has a very dry skin. I don't know the course. Okay. Um uh we we also can't say what it is until we say it. So <laughs> it's better you you, you, it's a possibility because you say your children have dry skin and you've had some, some question about allergic condition. You might want to ask about the eyes yes. condition. I think most likely your babies have a to be match. So one there's one for the eyes, one for the skin and all that they are all going together. It's possible, but it's better to see the pediatrician first so you will know what it is. We're just trying to take all the questions that are already coming already so that we can round up. I know our time is up. Just give us another five, ten minutes and then we'll round up. Yeah. Okay, this is from John. We have allergies in the family, and as I started having kids, I discovered they got it too. Now my second baby has what, has what we told the doctors as astopic dermatitis. Dermatitis. But the cream. Okay, well the yeah. creams we were giving worked for a few days, and I'm not seeing any improvement anymore. Yeah. Even so, another dermatologist, and it's still the same. Is there any other yeah. remedy for this? Yeah, I understand. You see, the, the parents need to understand, uh, John, uh, there are some conditions that we, we can only manage, we can kill them. And atopic dermatitis is one of those. It's, it's, it's a condition that tends to worse and when it comes and goes. So we deal with each each time it comes. So and I know sometimes parents, when parents use those creams, you it helps, but you think it, they will, it will kill it. It's not going to kill it. Is going to make it into it will help, but it's to come back again until the children are doing the same thing just with like asthma. So even with all your preventing medication, your children can see the children can see have attacks, attacks. even despite the fact that they are on those uh, prevent. So the, the medications are not meant to be curative, they are not meant to take it away completely, they are just meant to kind of suppress it Managing. if you like and try to make it easier or better, but Sometimes it's, it's, it just doesn't go away completely. So 
don't be don't be impatient with your dermatologist. I really feel for the dermatologist because most times they are dealing with this. <laughs> they have used this, they have used that, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. What do I do? What do I do? It's gonna be very frustrating, but you just have to be patient. You just have to take it as part of that child's life. That's part of their skin, that's part of how they're going to grow. So, but with time, it could get better. But just don't be uh it's so hard to say this, but don't 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 think there's any magic wand anywhere it, it's very hard anywhere in the world and that's absolutely honest truth it's a condition that comes and go and with time you can only get better you can try your best avoid allergies use the cream do those things but it's, it takes time it will keep going and coming until you finally you mm -hmm. out of it, yeah. all right okay this is from alice in lawal my baby has rashes around her mouth and below her eyes as well could the rashes be allergy uh, Alice, we can't answer that question without seeing the rashes and without asking more questions. You know, so there are many causes of rashes. Infection can cause rashes, allergies can cause rashes. Rashes can even be normal. So there are many things. That, so we we can't say whether it's allergy or not without seeing your child. You know, so it is it is it depends on how the rashes look like, whether there's something triggering it off and all that. That's what we can help us to know answer that question so it's difficult to say so but i'll just say sure. doctor and they will advise yeah. okay it's, it's, it's biology how do you know when children have allergies okay isn't it you are you are just coming so what i'll oh, yes. after this one you watch it all over again and i'll answer your question so there are symptoms you will see the rashes the wheezing the the uh, watering of the eyes, another when they are exposed to certain things, then you know that most likely those children are having an allergic reaction to the oh, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Agu, can golden more cause allergies? <laughs> any any food can cause any food any food that a child can react to can cause allergy. Most children have uh, what is in your the product you mentioned is is in, is still a cereal. So if a child can a child can react to it. Can react to anything. Yeah. Okay. I think we almost get to the end. Um, okay. Um, this is from Adibe. My four-year-old baby always scratches her body, and there is no rushes. And yeah. anytime I start giving my kids milk after exclusive, they do have rushes. They yeah. Have so yeah, most likely it's the allergic reaction. They could be yeah. calming allergies, and you don't have to have rushes in allergy the itching itself is still one of the allergic symptoms so if you don't necessarily have to, the itching is actually even more uh what normally starts first before the rashes and before the rashes you know, what kind of milk do you give them after exclusive breastfeeding when you when you when you are doing exclusive breastfeeding after exclusive breastfeeding you should keep on breastfeeding while you are giving other food so you don't you don't necessarily have to give other milk you can keep giving breast milk as well up to two years and you can give other milk if your baby react to particular milk try another milk as well so that's it okay this is from chica what medication do i give my five-year-old for kata with wound in the nostrils okay chica we don't prescribe medications online it's not ethical thing to do we need to know what is wrong with your child first and please don't just go and buy any medication when your children have something your child has a wound has a cut you need to see a doctor first let them examine the child know what is causing it and then they can give you the appropriate medication and we don't usually prescribe medication in our group except uh simple first aid medication like paracetamol and which anybody can use but we don't prescribe any other kind of medication Thank you. All right. Chine, her baby is six. Since birth, if she's breathing, we'll be hearing a sound as if her breathing. Mm. And at times, her breath, she breathes from her mouth. Mm. So it has reduced on like when she was very young. Please, what can be the cause? Uh, okay, I'm sure now you know she's six. That <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is a typical symptom of a child with adenoids enlargement. So your, your history is so typical. But I'm happy that you said that it's better now because usually no. when they're about five to six, it tends to shrink yes. on its own. Yes. And if it is shrinking on its own, then there's no need for surgery. Yeah, but some, so children worry. It, yeah. some children have it so bad, we really need to do surgery and take it out. So if it's no longer causing a problem anymore, don't worry. But if you still worry or the child is having frequent infections, 
tonsillitis and all that, then you may see your ENT surgeon because after six years, the chances that to grow smaller is very low, and they may yeah. just have to take it out. But if it is already better, then you just relax and it is okay. It's most likely an adenoid enlargement, hypertrophy. Yeah. Okay. We've taken this question, Dr. Bini. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I think you got it twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's our okay, last question. Judith. All right. Judith, I want to ask if there is any any ways to give my seven months old son food he still likes, breast milk or other foods. And each time I give him cereal, he pulls immediately. Please help the first time, mom. Hi, Judith. Welcome. So if it's okay for your baby to still like breast milk, we want you to keep breast milk. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yes. But you need to gradually introduce new food and don't be impatient. Your baby is just seven months, so which we just we just started a month ago to introduce new food. So there's nothing wrong yeah. with the baby also going after giving food, as long as it's not okay. watery. That, that is fine. That is just normal reflex of the body. You know, so when you when you take when something enters into your stomach, it, it stimulates some reflex that goes down to the to the to the large intestine, and then the baby passes. So even some adults still do it. So there's nothing wrong with that. As long as the stools are normal, that does not mean your baby is allergic to the cereal, and that does not mean there's any wrong, anything wrong. As long as the stools are mm -hmm. normal stools, they are not watery and all that. So I don't think you should worry yourself at all. But for how to go about the complimentary feeding, you need to go to Active Pediatrician Facebook group. Now, when you go to the group, look in the menu section, look for what we call units. When you get to units, go to Nutrition 102, and you will see the learning units on complimentary feeding. We have very beautiful videos that will take you through what to give, how to give it, how, how to frequently give. to give it, what to avoid. Very long. You also do that course you become a professional when it comes to complimentary feeding. So I don't think you need to uh, to worry at all. Okay, so we're done, we're done, we're done. Okay, it seems to have disappeared, but I'm sure she will come back. So um, thank you for joining us. We're sorry we take an extra so much of your time today. And now I'm just going to talk to us about that this program you've been watching has been brought to you courtesy of Axie Pediatricians Foundation. Uh, we are a group about child we are after the welfare of children and one of the things we do beyond what we do online on asking asking your question on our facebook group or um uh doing this acp life health education program and our group discussion in our facebook group we also go beyond the facebook group we go offline to the communities that really you know where we have indigent children we try to reach them in our community medical outreaches and we have been doing this for the past um three years and we usually do two major outreaches every year we do our may uh outreach during the children's day and for those of you who are aware this year we're in Ekwe on in on may 27 children's day we celebrated with children of Ekwe and we also do outreaches during our independence day because we're a nigerian based uh we are registered fully in nigeria though we reach to all the parts of the world uh but in terms of our community outreaches we do it's mostly in Nigeria. And for the first time, we are going to go beyond just one community. We are doing five communities at a go. And so we want you to know that next week, Saturday, there will be no, we will have ACP live, but I will not be asking questions or taking a particular topic. You'll be watching us live from our uh, outreaches that we're going to have in uh, five parts of uh, uh country so we're going to be in quara and quara outreach is okay welcome back but i'm talking Thank about ACP life and uh, so i mean i'm talking about our activity foundation uh outreach oh, yeah. and that is why you say that myself and okay we are wearing our ATP t-shirt today just to tell you that what we do on ATP. and so we want you to know about our next week saturday we're we are actually doing it so between Saturday to like Monday, which is the October okay. first, which is our is it the fifty eighth and yeah, fifty eighth yes. anniversary of wow. Nigeria. So we are celebrating the Independence Day by doing community medical outreaches. So we'll be in Quara and so that that's one of we'll be in Quara at Oru and that's where our uh, we'll be reaching about one thousand children in Quara. We're also going to be in um Abuja, and I mean yeah. that's very big for us because that's actually the 
capital of Nigeria, it's and we're going to be in mm -hmm. Nyanya. Uh, yes, so we're going to reach out oh, yeah, yeah. to uh, estimated 500 children in Nyanya as well. And and when we do our medical outreaches, you know, what do we normally do? I think you know you can tell them. <laughs> what do we do our outreaches, having been in all the okay. all all of the outreaches. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That's, yes. Even more than me. <laughs> okay. So we are busy. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Okay. Okay. Basically, what we do is we reach out to children. As many children as we can have, as many children as we have planned yeah, for. Just we reach them with. Yes. Okay. Um, the first thing is they get to see a doctor. We, we do. Okay. The first process we register them to get yeah. their data, you know, so that we can know what to do with them. Then they go to the nurses. We check their vitals. Everybody gets the wand. It's very yeah, important. Most parents forget this. Right? Yes. Yes, you get the wounds, so we check their vitals, and then everyone gets to see a dentist. They get um, scaled, scaling and polishing. Yeah. Even some mothers have not done that in years. Yeah. The children will for get free. <laughs> for free. For free. Yes, yeah. you see a dentist. And then afterwards, you see pediatricians. If, if you really are very ill, we take, you know, we take those ones um, over every other one, those that are very ill, but every child gets to see a doctor or a pediatrician, and then you get your drugs for free. Yeah. We do tests, yes, at the outreaches, we yes, and it's okay. not just that, we have some free gifts for you loads of goodies, yeah, <laughs> loads of goodies. <laughs> yeah, so all the children get a LD lunch, we give them, you yes. know, because we want to demonstrate to them about. LG LG nutrition, so they get a full LD lunch complete from active ah. nutrition and they get water, they get drinks, and sometimes they, they, apart from that, fruits. Also, sometimes fruits. We give them fruits. So uh, we also give them clothes. So we have clothes yes. because usually we reach to indigenous communities, so we give free clothes and and things like that. Sometimes we give gifts, uh, brought it. Yes. And this time around, we also do entertainment for the children. So it's not a yes. boring. So when you are <laughs> time off, we to carnival, we enjoy the children enjoy it. We give them books. We also do ed talks. We talk to the children, you know, talk to the parents how to make sure that their children are healthy and beyond yeah. that this time around we have inside the attraction uh because our one of our supporters uh, which is the uh, free snap campina uh pick four five six they are going to be in all the locations and they are going to give the children uh their product the pick four five six yeah. and pick choco is going to be wonderful and they're going they to get do smoothies yeah they're going to do face face with all the children there's going to be yeah, smoothies and and takeaways and all that so it's going to be wonderful so really uh so we are celebrating our active pediatricians uh, uh, uh independence day through five outreaches in abuja mm -hmm. in kwara in abel uh, centenary hall opposite the alakis palace we are open nice. to reach about 500 children in abel Kuta. And of course, in Abia, in fact, we are the host, and uh, we are being hosted by the Speaker Oak Foundation in Abia, and uh, with yeah. the support of the First Lady of Abia State. So it's going to be wonderful in Abia. Uh, okay. And we're going to, Abia is going to be October 1st, and we're going to reach to yes. about, about 500 children in Abia. Sure. And of course, our base. Oh, <laughs> so we've been to, this time around, we've been to Lekki, we've been to, you know, yes. we started with Makoko, then we went Makoko, to. Yes. Then we, went to Jack on the Lekki. Lekki. then we went to Epe, Epe. and this time around, by popular demand of the Ikorodu, <laughs> we are coming to Ikorodu. So no, you know, people, if you want to know ACP people, come out and watch. And we're going to be in somewhere around Igo, Igo no, but I, I can't remember the address. Igo no, Igo no. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be wonderful. So this is what we're going to be doing. And so if you have been blessed by ATP, you've been part of what, oh, sorry. Okay, I think I should take that down now. So if you've been part of what we're doing and you really would love to be uh, a supporter of Active Pediatrician Foundation, you can still support us. We have seven days this time next week no. uh, ongoing in, Leg in uh, Lagos and uh, I think Quara. And then the uh, uh, Abuja, and then on October first will be Abia and uh, 
uh, Abel puts out on October 5th at the public holiday. So it's going to be wonderful and you can be part of it. So if you want to be part of it, uh, there are many ways you can be part of it. So just make sure you uh, reach out to us. Uh, if you, our, 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 our try and see if we can um, show you our account details so that you can uh, donate. If you want to donate, we'll be very happy for you to uh to to donate to her so uh every every amount received is accounted for mm -hmm. and we use it solely for the purpose of the uh, uh outreach we don't yes okay i think i have something to show now okay so this is our uh active pediatrician uh candidates if you want if you're a corporate body and you like to sponsor either this outreach or you want to also feature your own products, you, you are welcome to be part of it. Or if you want to donate to us, the account details you're showing on your screen. Or if you want to sponsor even our ATP Life, you are really, really, really welcome to be part of it. So we, we, it's going to be wonderful and we really appreciate you joining, uh, being part of these outreaches and we touch many more uh, Nigerian children. And as we round up the final announcement to tell us that, um, after this broadcast, if you drop your questions, we will not be able to answer it. So please don't drop your questions on, on this video. If you want to ask questions, whether on allergy conditions or allergies or even other topic on child health, that is what we do on Ask the Pediatricians. Just go to our Facebook group. Our Facebook group is if you just type in Ask the Pediatricians into Facebook, it will take you straight to our page. We have our group, we have our page, but the group you will see is about 500 thousand people that you know that you are in the right ask the pediatrician Please. facebook group click join we will approve your membership then you post your questions so all questions are subject to admin approval but we approve your question we work mondays to saturdays please we don't work on sundays sundays our rest day <laughs> <laughs> Try to send us questions on Sunday. People always say we can't get through. Please, we don't answer questions on Sunday. But from Monday to Saturday, twenty four seven, we you can post your questions. It will be approved. Our moderators, we have professionals. They will answer your questions. Depending if it's something a moderator can handle, it will be handled faster. If it's something a professional needs to handle, you need to exercise a little bit of patience. Uh, maybe between forty to seven. But we try to answer most of our questions within forty to seventy two hours, and then we will. We'll, we'll, well, of course, we do health education and information. And if you also want to read, you can also read a lot of things on this page. Uh, so um, you can always ask the pediatrician your questions. And But please drop the questions in our group. If it's something anonymous, you don't want your name to show, then you have to email us. Uh, send your email to ask. ASK at askthepediatricians.com. If you go on our group, there are so many questions that have been answered already. You can use the search button and you may even you don't even need us to answer because you just get the answer by yourself. We also have the learning units, we have the file section, we also have our YouTube channel. If you want to watch all our previous ATP oh live videos, yeah, all the previous ATP live videos they are available on our page. They are available on our website, www.askpediatricians.com. They are available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash askpediatricians. So you can get all this health information. So many ways by which we can assist you because our goal is to promote child health intelligence and that's what we do on ATP. And we're so grateful for you for joining us uh, this morning. So thank you so much. Okay, what do you have to say? We have to go now. <laughs> yes, we have to go. But one thing I have to say is I've, I've been at all the other and putting smiles on the faces of these children means a lot. So please donate to ATP and help put a smile on one child's face at least. Thank you for being a part of ATP Life today. Thank you very much, Dr. Bemi. I have learned a lot as well and I'm sure you have learned something. And thank so you for everyone. Forward. Yes. <laughs> thank you for being part of Thank you. Bye. Have a nice Saturday. Bye.